Hey everyone, in this video I compare 10 of the most popular free video editors that are available to download and use. This is a whole wide spectrum from kind of some of the very worst to some of the very best. And so I created this nice chart and spreadsheet you can download and look at more detail about how I arrived at this conclusion. But basically I rated these programs based on uh, whether they were free or not, whether they're cross-platform, the tools that they have, uh, the user interface, um, whether or not they watermark the video. Some of these programs say they're free, but then they add a watermark. Uh, one of the grading criteria is if it supports a wide variety of formats, like if it'll actually work with your video or your audio. So all kinds of different things, uh, but let's take a look and dive right in and check out these 10 free programs for video editing. The program that performed the best is called Caden Live. It works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. It's 100% free and open source. So when you download it, you get the full free version. There's no need to pay to unlock anything. There's no watermarks. Uh, Caden Live is one of the main programs that I've been using for several years uh, here on my YouTube channel and also professionally to do work for clients. It performed very well in every area except for the availability of templates. So there are very few templates that come default with Caden Live. And there's also surprisingly very few templates available from the community. So if you want a lot of built-in um, templates to jumpstart your video project, you may want to look elsewhere because Caden Live does not have a lot of those. That being said, it's a good opportunity for someone to step up and create some templates uh, for Caden Live. But it does very well, uh, has very advanced effects. You can do key framing, uh, has really good chroma key feature, uh, really good transitions, and uh, it's open source. So you can add to this software. Uh, and you can rest easy knowing that it's going to be around and available for years to come. It's not going to uh, change. You can always stick with an older version. So it's a great option to look into. The next program we'll look at is Shotcut. And Shotcut's also a program I've used for several years. It's one that I use almost daily uh, here in the video studio. It works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. It's also free for personal and commercial use. Uh, and you get the full free version when you download it. It's not a trial or a paid version. Uh, there's no... Uh, watermark that will ever be put over top of the video unless you want to add a watermark to your video. Uh, but Shotcut performed very, very well. And it's a little bit more simple than Caden Live, which is why it uh, scored a little bit lower. It doesn't have all the same features that you would find in Caden Live. It's a little bit more simpler, uh, which is kind of a, a benefit and also a negative. You can't do as much advanced things with it, but it's also, I find it a little bit more easy to use, especially for newcomers. And I feel like it's very intuitive and easy. But the tools that it does have are very advanced and responsive. You can do uh, advanced key framing, you can do chroma key, uh, you can has different audio tools, color grading tools, and you just drag and drop them in. Um, both Shotcut and Caden Live also had tremendous support for media format. Any video, audio, or image you throw in there will work. You can also export in just about any format you can imagine. So as far as compatibility goes, uh, it has excellent, excellent compatibility with your media. Uh, similar to Caden Live, though, Shotcut also doesn't have a wide variety of templates to choose from. And the templates that come built in are very, very basic and not impressive. But Shotcut's a great video editor, and it is kind of the one that I recommend for people when they're just looking for a, a video editing software. It's kind of my go-to recommendation, just because it's easy to use, it's completely free, nice clean interface, and very reliable software. This next program is DaVinci Resolve. It's one of the most professional video editors in the industry, between free and proprietary. They have a free version. Uh, you have to put in your email address and kind of sign up for it. Uh, so it's a little bit cumbersome to get started using. But once you start using it, it is definitely the best program I've used as far as color grading, um, being able to color grade and make your video look amazing. Uh, it's not 100% free, so it's not open source. It loses points for that. It is proprietary. Uh, currently, they offer a free version. It's always kind of changing, but they have a free version that's pretty full featured. It will add watermarks. It does limit some of the features you can use. I would say if you were going to use a program that you wanted to pay for uh, in the future, this is a good way to go. Uh, I'd stay away from a lot of the other ones that we're going to look at that are kind of half free, half paid, and just if you're going to pay for something, this should be the one. The way DaVinci Resolve is set up, it actually has different tabs you work in, so it has a node editor. You can also just do basic editing. Uh, like I mentioned, the color grading also. It has some good audio tools. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty well-rounded program for doing video editing. It does have some advanced transitions, some good built-in uh, transitions and effects, um, really good for doing titles, 
Uh, so a pretty good program. Uh, it does need a little bit more powerful computer if you're going to use it. So you'll want to have a, a good graphics card. I recommend having like a solid state drive and some a pretty good processor. So it does take, it's just going to take a little bit more resources to be able to run effectively. But it's a, a good option to look into. It's scored pretty well. You know, one of the best video editors in this lineup. This next one we'll look at is Blender Video Editor. Now Blender does a really good job. You probably know it as being a 3D modeling program. But it also has this video editor that is really good. There's some things that you can do in Blender, specifically if you're wanting to work, do some 3D um, special effects work in your video, then, and if you're already familiar with Blender and know how to use it, um, it can be a good choice. It's scored pretty well. It's a very, very powerful video editor. It's not as intuitive as some of the other video editors that we'll look at, uh, but it is really, really powerful. It also has a few built-in transitions and effects. Um, not hardly any templates. You can build your own templates, but they're not really catering to trying to make your life easy as a video editor. Um, they're basically just giving you all the raw tools and the raw power. Um, you can It takes advantage of your GPU. Uh, you can do really, really cool advanced animation and keyframing. Uh, you can even work in 3D space, which is most other video editors have a hard time truly working in 3D space, and Blender can do it no problem. Um, that being said, it's going to be more difficult to use. Blender is open source and cross-platform. It works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And Blender can also handle just about any format you throw at it, and it can also export in a wide variety of media formats. This next program is Lightworks. Lightworks is a great video editor. It's been used in Hollywood videos, so very professional. Um, over the years, they've kind of changed it. They announced that they were going to go open source, but then they never did release the source code. So it's still, at this point in time, closed source which docked at some points, but it really lost points um, in my review uh, for limiting the export to 720p. So it, you can't export 1080 or 4K without paying for an upgrade. So it's not really completely free. They also require an email address in order to download it. Um, it's just sort of more of a, it has more of a proprietary software feel to it. And if you want to pay for software, Lightworks might be a good one to go for, but it's not really completely free because of the uh, um, not being open source. Not really. They, it is free for personal and commercial use, but you can't really use it commercially if you can only export at 720p because that's just not really high enough. You know, you're, you're going to want 1920 at least. Um, some of the great things it does have, though, good transitions and effects, nice modern user interface. It does not watermark your videos, even in the free version. Lightworks runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And it's a pretty intuitive, kind of a nice, clean user interface, I feel like. The next program is OpenShot. OpenShot is an open source video editor. Uh, it is not as full featured as the rest. It might be one of the weakest ones in this lineup. Um, that being said, if you're looking for a free video editor that's easy to use, um, this is a good good one to pick because it doesn't overwhelm you with lots of different effects and features. It's just very simple. The user interface is simple and kind of big and bubbly. Um, this might be a good one for kids to get started using video editing. You could use it professionally depending on what you're doing, um, you know, creating video slideshows or um, some simple video projects. But like I said, it doesn't have all the same features you would want for doing a lot of professional work. It does support almost every uh, format of file you can throw at it, images, audio, video. It just supports it all, which is great. Uh, it scored lower points in the chroma key. So again, chroma key, doing green screen is a little bit more advanced. It didn't handle that super well compared to the other video editors. Uh, it is cross-platform, so it works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. It will work on your computer. It also works on a lot of older, slower computers. So if you have a, a laptop or something without a GPU or just an older, slower computer, it'll probably work just fine for you. It actually does have more built-in templates than most of the programs in here, um, again, making it kind of easy to get started using. Uh, it, it's a good program for what it is. It just scored lower points. This next program is VideoPad. Now, VideoPad loses a lot of points right off the bat because it is not free for commercial use. The free version is only for personal use. Um, it's also not open source, so it's, the software is closed. You can't make changes and adjustments to it yourself. And that closed source also means you're not going to be, be guaranteed to be able to use it in the future. They can restrict that license. Uh, so that's kind of a big negative for me. Uh, they do support um, Windows and Mac, which I really appreciate. It doesn't work on Linux, but it's not just a Windows only, which is some of these other ones are. Uh, it doesn't have any uh, advantages 
uh, if you have a GPU, it won't use your GPU for processing. It's CPU only, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, you can't do proxy video editing. Uh, the color grading tools aren't great. The UI is not amazing. Um, but it does not watermark the video, so that's nice. It won't put a watermark on your video, even in the in the free version. But again, you can't use it for commercial use unless you pay for the upgrade. Uh, it does have some built-in uh, transitions and effects, uh, a decent amount. And it has quite a, some good built-in templates as well, more than some of the other ones that we've looked at. Uh, so that can be nice, just getting up and going. I just I can't really recommend VideoPad. It's a highly highly marketed video editor. So you maybe maybe hear people recommending it sometimes, but it's just I feel like there's a lot of marketing and a lot of hype behind it, and I just could I wouldn't recommend. It. Some of the other ones we've looked at are much much better choices, uh, but I couldn't really recommend uh, VideoPad. This next program is a popular one, a big name, Wondershare Filmora. Uh, it has a nice clean interface and a lot of built-in templates and effects and transitions. So it's gonna have be make your videos look a lot better than some of the other ones we looked at, just because it has all these built-in animated title effects, which is really cool. Uh, that being said, it is it will watermark your videos. Uh, you get um, a lot of pop-ups asking you to pay an upgrade. A lot of the features are kind of paywalled and locked. So the free version, let's see here. You cannot use the free version for commercial use, only personal use. You wanna use it commercially, you have to pay. Uh, it's not open source. Uh, it is not cross-platform. It does have support for GPU acceleration, so it'll take advantage of your GPU. You could use this professionally if you paid for the upgrade. Uh, just the free version, you really can't. So if you're doing a, if you want a free video editor, uh, it's got a great user interface, easy to use, built-in templates, not as advanced as some of the other videos, video editors that we've looked at, uh, but still a great, uh, great program. Uh, it also scored quite a bit lower on importing different types of video and uh, images and audio. It may not support, you know, the video that you want to edit. You might have to transcode it first. That being said, it's a decent video editor. It scored pretty low, mostly for not being open source and not being able to use commercially without paying for it. Also for adding a watermark uh, on top of the video um, when you don't pay. <laughs> you know, you gotta put in, you know, they want your email address, they, they want to market you. There's very much, you know, Filmora is trying to get your money and they're gonna advertise to you, they're gonna try to get you to pay them. The next program we'll look at is Hit Film Express. This is one that gets a lot of love and a lot of hate from people on the internet. Um, I'm gonna give it a lot of hate because it's a terrible video editor. Uh, right off the bat, it will watermark uh, what you export depending on, if you use just about any effect or feature, it's gonna add a watermark. If you try and export higher resolutions, it's gonna add a watermark, higher frame rates. So you can't use the, com it will not allow commercial use. You have to pay if you wanna do it commercially. Um, but you could use it for free. It does have a nice user interface. Uh, it did terrible with importing different types of video and, and images. Uh, about 50% of the video I tried to throw at it, it would not work. I had to transcode it in a different program and then bring it in. So it doesn't support working with, you know, importing a lot of different video formats. It also doesn't support nearly as many export formats. So it's just much more limiting uh, in what you can do with it. It does have, there's some caveats, like it does have really good built-in effects, but you have to pay for them. It has really good built-in transitions, but you have to pay for them. Like it has very, very few in the free version, and then you can pay and unlock like an individual effect, or you can subscribe and, you know, get them all unlocked for 30 days. I, again, like they want your money, just like um, Filmora and VideoPad, like Hit Film Express is a closed proprietary uh, software and the company wants your money they're going to try to get you to pay for it it's you know they don't they want to give you just enough of a program that you're always going to be you know paying them more money and keep paying them month after month so i wasn't Im impressed with hitfilm and i would recommend steering clear from it. it also scored almost the lowest of all the video editors that i reviewed and this last program we'll look at is VSDC. VSDC did score the lowest of all video editors. So this one um, doesn't have GPU acceleration. It's not open source. You can't use it commercially without paying for the upgraded version. 
it actually did do well supporting video formats and different, uh, it, you can import and export lots of different video formats, which is cool. Some transitions and effects, terrible user interface, and just really glitchy. The, the, the worst part about it is it just didn't behave the way you'd want it to. It's got tons, it just, it's just overwhelming and it's just, nothing is in the, in the place where it's supposed to be, nothing's intuitive about it. Um, and then the final exported videos are just, you know, glitchy and blinky and not, not great. So definitely stay away from VSDC. I don't know if I want to say much more about it. Well, those are the programs I wanted to share with you today. Hopefully you found this video informative. Check out some of the links below if you'd like to learn more about these programs or learn more about the criteria that I used uh, for evaluating these. I have some playlists here on this channel teaching how to use a lot of these video editing programs. I start from a very basic level, teach you the basics, how to get started video editing using them. So check those out in the description below. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I look forward to catching you in the next video.